when you have people call in, you want them to call in a landline. But yeah. the number of people that say, I don't have one anymore, it's since, to me. I do. I do. But I'm, you know, you're over 50. I'm we're 50. Old school. I do okay. not have a landline. So I, I, <laughs> I texted this man to say, hey, do you want to come on and tell us what the Yinzer should do for draft night, even though they got to smoke them if you got them on, on first night of draft? You want, if you, do, you, do you have a landline or you have a cell or, or are you one of those millennials without a landline? He provided a landline and called it a, he said he was a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> From Bob Hart's Abishola on CBS, none other than Billy Gardell, the grown up here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Billy? <laughs> What's up, you guys? Good morning. Hey, Good morning, Rich. Billy. How you doing, buddy? You sound I'm great, doing Billy. Good, man. Getting through it a day at a time like everybody else, like listening that. to science and doctors and math and just trying to stay in that lane. Not a boy. I'm glad that you're... I can't mess with this. I can't mess with this virus. I'm 50. I'm overweight. I got asthma and type 2 diabetes. It's outside looking for me. I got to be extra careful. And I'm glad that you're inside on the phone here on that hard line uh, chat with me. Um, and and uh, figuratively, uh, smoke them if you got them Thursday night. The rare situation where the Steelers have coughed up their first round pick, although it was kind of worth it for Minka Fitzpatrick last year, wouldn't you say, Billy? Um, I, 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 that's why I'm completely relaxed about that. Um, the one, the, the one great thing about last year was we realized now we have a defense that can compete. And and uh, Minka was when I got a buddy in Miami who was tortured. He's a tortured Dolphins fan, but he called me when that trade happened. He goes, "You're going to love this guy." They, he, he's like, he's one of the few bright spots on our defense. And what he did, man, and I, this is better than anybody we could have gotten the draft. The Steelers have gotten scorched over the last decade in the middle of the field. Any quarterback that, that wants zone defense that knows how to play against it would shred us in the middle of the field. Brady shredded us in the middle of the field. And I think Minka has taken that away. He's not only he's not only made it unsafe to go in the middle, but he's provided several turnovers. I love his attitude. I, I could not be happier with that trade. So I, I'm all for that trade. I think where we got to look, I, I think they'll try to even toughen that line up even more than it is. Although it's 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 pretty electric our defensive line again finally. And we, you know when you got a good pass rush, you can hide a secondary that's trying to grow and mature. Because if you're getting to the quarterback, you ain't got time to go downfield. But if there's no pass rush, you can't hide anything. But I think that defense has come together in a way that is very very exciting. Um, I think we got to go. I think th I think where they'll look because they always traditionally do. We're always like we always have 57 linebackers. Yeah. So I would <laughs> imagine we're going to look for a linebacker or an edge rusher. And then um, they got to go after a running back. We got to go. We have to. I like Connor a lot, but he had that Pro Bowl season. But then he was banged up every couple weeks. For, for the way we play football, I'm not sure a fast, explosive runner is the guy we want. I mean, that might be a good change of speed guy. And I'm not taking anything away from Connor. I just think the punishment on his frame and weight for what we do is it doesn't match up. And I think it would be a lot better season for him if we just got a big nasty hog to hand the ball to well, that's what i'm rooting well for. billy gardell we had uh we had uh, mike florio of pro football talk on yesterday and he threw out hey if leonard fournette's on the block oh. maybe that's the fit for the steelers um again oh. I know, again, but they it was so out of character for them to trade up for Devin Bush last year and then thoroughly out of character to trade out of a first-round pick for Mika Fitzpatrick in the middle of a season, uh, certainly after their quarterback has uh, announced he's done for the season. So right. if, if, as long as you're out of character doing that, maybe you should be a little bit out of character and go hop on Leonard Fournette. Billy. I, I think that that's one of those things where, where you know, Progress eventually makes you turn the dial a little bit. I love that they stick to always a – they stick to their number in the draft. They stick to finding players. Like one of our staples is you, you find a player in the draft that comes to Pittsburgh, gets the program, and will play so far over their head at Pittsburgh that it's amazing. And then, you know, then they move off to Seattle and you never hear their name again like Chad Brown. But I, I do believe – that uh, you have to kind of turn the dial a little bit these days because the market's just too in flux now. And uh, I, I, I would love to have for, uh, Leonard Fournette. I, I, I would, uh, yeah, that's what. The thing I miss most about Bettis is if, if you had five minutes left in the game, and even if you were up by two, if you saw him come trotting out 
you could just relax. You could you could go build a plate of nachos because you knew he was just going to grind them into mm-hmm. submission. And I would love to have that guy. I would love to have a closer like that again. That would be my ultimate pick. But I don't I don't know where they're going to go for that. Billy Gardell of CBS's Bob Hart's Avishola here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show, formerly of uh, Mike and Molly back in the day, and that's where we first uh, met you. And I just love your fandom, uh, Billy. For those who might be new to you as a diehard Steeler fan, let me just walk through a couple sure. of things that I've I've uh, just of our history okay of our, of our history uh, you're, well, we met doing that read for Manginello and you were just a, I just I, when we did I fell for you on the first date Rich well, I gotta tell you right back at you when we did the uh, live read of Major League which was amazing yeah, you got to do Euchre's part and I got to do the I got a guy online too about some white walls. Eddie, I'll call you back. <laughs> it was amazing. It was uh, it was uh, uh, unbelievable that night. Um, so uh, back in the day, uh, well, just last year, um, in your lead pipe wielding <laughs> professional, you couldn't make it on the show because your voice was shot. Right? You just you just yeah. went all out against the Browns last year when you went to I, Heinz Field. I, I actually uh, that was the home Browns game after. Uh, um, the crowning. Uh, Rudolph got hit in the head with that helmet. Yes. Which, you know, look, as a Steelers fan, of course, you, you think the other guy was out of line. But as, as, as a sensible person and a quarterback, probably not the guy you should go start with. And if you do, make sure one of your guys is standing in front of you. But it got nasty and it got ugly. And there was no way, even without Ben, that we could lose that game in Cleveland. And I was scheduled to come do your show. Yes the next day <laughs> and i went to that home game i even took my mom for extra mojo because she's out of her mind too <laughs> and uh they let us do the terrible towel twirl and it, it was a, it was just a day of screaming and then i i i, I know i called you then i was like rich i'm yeah. really sorry <laughs> but I, I can't come on the show because i hate cleveland and you said, "I understand, Billy. We'll do it again." Yeah, your, your voice, your voice sounded like Tom Izzo, March Madness, Tom Izzo. Like you know, like you yeah. couldn't. That's what it sounded like. Yeah, there was nothing left. No, and, and I, I've, I've done that once before. Um, during Mike and Molly, I went to the Jets uh, Steelers playoff game with with uh, when we they dinged that, and I'm not trying to bring up bad feelings here, but that that field goal. But yeah, I Billy. came home so screamed out and so sick that it cost us three days of rehearsal from Mike and Molly, and uh, <laughs> and then I did it again. Now I, I did it again with the Cleveland game because I came home and then just tried to walk into rehearsal. I was like, "Hey, everybody!" And Chuck was like, he walked by and he put Chuck Laurie put his hand on my shoulder. He goes, "No more." No more football games during the filming season, okay, buddy? <laughs> They're going to write it in your contract, Billy. You better be careful. Which was the game where you lit a can- – when did you light a candle in a church in New York City? When did you do I that one? I lit a candle in a church for – that was – that was that was the uh, – that was the, uh, the – when we lost that absolute heartbreaker to New England, when the, uh, they flicked that ball over the end zone and they said that – um, uh, Heath Miller didn't have it. And it he didn't have the catch. Down. We yeah. lost that heartbreaker. And I was in New York City because I called you. And I, I walked uh, to St. Patrick's Cathedral, and I lit a candle for the Jets and said, <laughs> J-E-T, Jets, 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 Jets. And I said that in hopes that you would beat them because there was some crazy scenario that if the Jets beat the Patriots and 14 other teams won by two, we would get in. So that's why... That's why I was lighting the candle well, at St. Patrick's and, that week. And this is this is no uh, this has got nothing to do with religion. How'd that work out for you, uh, Billy? How did that candle let work out for you? Nobody answered, Rich. But I guess there's bigger <laughs> prayers out there. Nobody answered. Uh, but you know, you can't hurt. You don't know. Sometimes God's biggest answers are no's. We end up, you know, I don't know. I okay. don't know. That said, Billy Gardell, what do you think about Tom Brady, the Buccaneer? What do you think about that one? Uh, see, here's the thing. Uh, if 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 they can get that line to not touch him, he's going to torture that division. And Bruce Arians is a great quarterback guy. Oh, yes. He's a great quarterback guy, and he's the kind of coach that you kind of want to run through a wall for. So it makes me uh, – it makes me – I I'm not ready to make a, a judgment on that till I see it yet, but I, I think it could be – I think it could be real interesting games watching Brady and Breeze go at it, you know, or Brady and 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 in that division, the, the Houston game against him would be good. I, I, 
I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about it. I, I just, I wish the guy was just retiring. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I've had all the Tom Brady than a human being can take. So if we're going to have to put up with him again, I got to wait and see. I don't know what's going to happen. He may have some of that, you know, magic like Montana had when he went to Kansas City. Oh, Those yeah. guys are just not. They're not. They're not on the regular chart. You know. They are not on know. the. They are not on the regular chart. So now that Tom is in Tampa, okay. Yes. And now that Eli is retired and Philip is yep. on the Colts and Breeze has been on the Saints for, for a while, but he hasn't been on the same team since the very beginning. Do you know who the most tenured with uh, his original team uh, quarterback is in the National Football League now? Billy Gardell. Well, it's probably Ben, right? It is that. Can we put the yeah. photograph, the most recent photograph we've seen of Big Ben up on the screen? Billy. Oof. Um, have you seen this no, photograph? Looks, I don't know what he's doing. He looks like he's been out in the woods looking for truffles. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> truffles? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know. I mean, you grow the beard, and I don't know if he's building a log cabin or what. Just, you know. Looks like you went from, just what's, it looks like you went from Duck Hodges to Duck Dynasty, uh, quite yeah, frankly. <laughs> Billy? Yeah, he's looking like Uncle Jesse from the Dukes of Hazard. I don't know what we're doing there. <laughs> So I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that that's just a thing, and maybe that's the, I'm growing the beard until the arms at full strength, and then hopefully he'll come back firing the cannon again. You so know, that's what I'm rooting for. So you're not concerned uh, right now, Billy? I, I, I don't think so. I actually I actually think he's going to come back strong, and he's going to be all right. And I think we're going to have a great year with that defense. And if we can find a running back, I think we're going to be in the mix, man. I really do. All right. I love it. The glass is half full. Maybe you should Always go. Always with the Steelers. Hey, we Always. Go. Now, I will say this. Yes. Eli Manning doesn't get enough respect. Can I, we just say that? I agree, Billy. You're, talk, you're preaching Eli to the choir. Eli Manning beat Tom Brady at his peak twice in the biggest show on earth. And you know he's still sitting four seats away from Archie at Thanksgiving dinner. And I don't think it's right. <laughs> How do you know what the seat chart is yeah, there, Billy? Sitting in the three. Away. I see how the family dynamic is. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton. It's like, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Yeah, yeah, records, <laughs> records. I beat Brady twice. You threw wobbling ducks on Denver to win a Super Bowl, and then wow. you should be taking your defense. Wow. Eli beat Brady twice in the biggest dance there is. Do you want to handle that one, Christopher? I mean, I, uh, he did. Michael Strahan what? and Justin what? Tuck Please deserve that. most that. of that, or Billy. Maybe that, that rainy, wobbly ball he was throwing, Peyton was throwing against Chicago in that Super Bowl. That was Come Dominic on. Rhodes. No. And, no, he, well, Peyton was Eli given what the defense came out gave there him. Like, like, like Emilio Estevez and Young Guns and said, <laughs> I'll make you famous, and took Brady down twice. <laughs> He should be sitting next to his father on Thanksgiving he staring might, at Peyton. He might still be, but actually Cupper's probably the one that's right there. He's yeah. the oldest, and they uh, you know, I think that they, they both look up to their older brother. Like, if I, I once saw the night where um, Archie received the Summerall Award at the Pat Summerall Dinner, and Cooper was the one who went out, or Cupper, as they refer to him, went up there, and both Eli and Peyton, they deferred to their older brother, just like any old family. So well, that's that's older brother stuff, though. Right. That's probably because he used to torture them when they were little. If he's the <laughs> older brother, there's been punishment that's been handed out. I just don't think that Eli gets the justice he deserves. I got to see Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning has more endorsement deals than a NASCAR car. Just put stickers all over it. He'll sell whatever you have. This is just... Eli does not get. He gets a G-Shock watch commercial he beats the best ever and we never hear from him again i just think it's something this is just the steeler yinzer anti peyton <laughs> angst hey man you you got the ball bounced your way you know didn't bounce your way or you know and big ben made the tackle of his life you took out peyton he did yes he did you know i'm I still didn't beat brady twice on the biggest show on earth there you go that's billy gardell i'm saying Thanks for the call, no, Billy. Didn't, didn't make no noise. Went out there and beat him twice. <laughs> You're the man, Billy. Thanks for the call. Stay in, stay safe, and uh, enjoy the draft Thursday night. We'll see I you Friday you when the Steelers are in Have a great day. Thanks for having me back on. Everybody, let's enjoy the draft because that's all we got right now. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to just get a trickle of sports. We're going to give you a big, a, big, a big night of the draft Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all that good stuff. You take care of yourself, Billy. Be well, man. Right back be at you. Billy, Billy Gardell. Good. Man, I love that guy. He just makes me <laughs> laugh. Billy. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.